Hi everyone! This is a video tutorial on the reaction mechanism for the conversion of an aldehyde to an oxime. So if we take a look at the board over here, this is what the mechanism looks like, so let's talk about it step by step. So over here we have our aldehyde, and this here is hydroxylamine. This is going to be our nucleophile. So remember that this carbon in a carbonyl is going to be slightly positive because it's attached to an electronegative oxygen. And that partial positive makes it a very good attack point for our nucleophiles. So with the lone pairs on this nitrogen group here, we're going to have it come and attack that carbon position. That carbon would then have too many bonds, so our pi bond will break, and we're going to kick that up and dump those electrons onto this oxygen. So now, whenever you've got a tetrahedral intermediate, which is what this is, which is where a carbon is sp3 hybridized, intermediate because this carbon here is attached to more than one electronegative group, so we're going to know that that's not a very stable compound, and we're ultimately going to have to continue the reaction until we're able to get it back down to an sp2 hybrid. Now the way that this will always transpire is once you've opened up the tetrahedral intermediate, you're going to protonate the group that you want to leave and you're going to deprotonate the group that you want to stay. So in this case here, I'm not going to want the nitrogen group to leave as I just added it. So what's going to happen is I want to get rid of this group here ultimately and I want to keep this group on. So what will happen is I need to protonate this group here. Protonation makes groups better at being kicked off or better leaving groups. So this O will come and deprotonate the nitrogen here, and this bond set will be turned into a lone pair sitting on top of that nitrogen. So at the end of it here, you have a neutral tetrahedral intermediate. Still, even though it's neutral, it's not particularly stable, so we know that we're going to continue this reaction onward. So we need to shut this back down to an sp2 carbon. So what will happen is that this nitrogen with that lone pair is going to push its lone pair down to reform the pi bond. Once again, this carbon would have too many bonds if we left it like that, so that means another bond will have to break. And over here, because we've made this a relatively decent leaving group, when this one shuts down, we're going to be able to kick that OH group off. So at the end here, we've regained that sp2 hybrid, and now we've kicked off this group here. The last step is you typically want to eliminate charges that are left on your final product. So this will act as a very good base. It'll come and it'll deprotonate the nitrogen here, forming water, and then giving us our neutral oxime at the very end. So that's how you would form an oxime from an aldehyde.